Welcome to Bits That Won't Be Broadcast. <laughs> straight up with the sexiest story, ladies and gentlemen. It's headliners. Here's a picture of Prime Minister Gordon Brown settling into his new office. Wow. Feel the energy drain out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> what does GBTC stand for? Is it give Blair this cyanide? <laughs> is it actually give back Tony's cup? <laughs> is it, is it, is it Gordon? grumpy bunny takes control? <laughs> Is it, is it Gordon? Sorry. Is it? <laughs> you, got, you got the new grumpy bunny. It's hideous, seriously. Vibrators, which is a shrug. It's actually to do with the design of the cup. It's God bless tessellated crockery. <laughs> Tessellated crockery. Uh, are you sure? Tessellated. Mm. Tessellated. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interlocking pattern. It was a very clever joke. Very clever. Very clever. Tremendously clever. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I've, I've got one that isn't so clever. Is it Gordon Brown touching cloth? Yeah. Oh, it's about shit. It's a good one. Yeah. With tessellated crockery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Is it Gordon battles Tourette's? Cunt! <laughs> Thank you, well, Frankie, for celebrating our move from 10 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Uh, an earlier slot to make it more inclusive, to draw more young people into political discussion. <laughs> oh, that love, young people love that. The Tesla joke can get fuck all, but cut. <laughs> <laughs> yes. or, or is it George Bush total cock? <laughs> Nothing to do with the picture. Nothing to do with the picture. You're just happy. <laughs> That's the sentiment. Yeah. I thought we were trying to get the kids involved with politics. <laughs> we'll get the kids involved. Watch this. Gordon Brown tickles chickens. <laughs> <laughs> How old are those kids? They're about eight. Well, uh, <laughs> take those marbles out of your ass, playing silly. I love the way you actually tickle a, a to scale chicken there. Yeah. Well. yeah. I'd like the chicken to raise up its wings. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Not under the chin and the wobble. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not a weirdo. I know what it's tickle. <laughs> just there, and then if you're feeling a little bit frisky, just round the back. Of the <laughs> Which way is the chicken facing? It's facing that way. Oh, okay. I can't look at their eyes. It makes me feel a bit odd. Um, <laughs> I, have yeah, to, I, tickle them. I approach from behind. Um, <laughs> I think of them as a pony, and I just gently approach them. <laughs> I tickle other animals. <laughs> we should probably move on. My mum's going <laughs> Oh, tickle animals, do you, Ross? <laughs> Sorry, Mum. Is it gin brought in a teacup? <laughs> or are we now too so interested in tickling fucking chickens? <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus, no, feel that no. anger. <laughs> Who, who had the most controversial view of the flooding? This was, was it Wimbledon. <laughs> yeah. This was the Bishop of Carlisle. Oh, yeah, what well, yeah, lunatic. Yeah, yeah. He'd come in and said that he thought the reason for all the flooding was because we were too permissive and there was too much pro gay legislation. <laughs> Yeah. South Yorkshire, of course, noted as a hotbed for the gay community. <laughs> oh, I've just come back from Tuppit, and I've had a bit of Tupcock. If God's anti-gay is hardly going to flood Hull and leave Brighton. <laughs> but if, you were worried, if you were worried about whether you're going to have a hosepipe ban next year and you're thinking that God can sort it out for you, just, you don't want to worry about writing to the council, you just want to get down to some bestiality buggery and binge drinking. <laughs> it's it's, it it's utter you. nonsense. It's the idea that, you know, if you bum a man, Bad weather, it's, you know. You know that's pretty much it. What he's saying. He didn't, he didn't put it like that. Sound like 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 red sky at night. <laughs> but the point is, <laughs> bad, bad weather. Exactly. <laughs> the, point, <laughs> the point I'm trying to make. Tell me that. In, in ancient in ancient Greece, all they did was read books and occasionally bum each other. Lovely weather. You know? <laughs> it makes no sense unless that's what England, the England cricket team have been doing. Imagine that. We're losing. Let's bring a storm, Freddie. <laughs> That's why they call it out. That's why they call it out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Your, your summation of ancient Greek culture <laughs> is read books, yeah, right? They were entirely an oral history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Occasionally bum each yeah. other. Yeah. Pretty much. That's the cornerstone of our society. Yeah. No wonder we've ended up here. What the fucking week. Yeah. <laughs> 
Which other blue-blooded public figure had the headlines this week? Is it Smurf? Oh. Who's on the loose? There is, um, yes. <laughs> There's no proof that Smurfs have blue blood. They actually just have blue skin. Wow, I never Which thought I'd be the... told off for that. <laughs> I say, I it's one of the rarest bollockings I've ever got. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that Smurfs are blue-blooded. You're right, I've been a fool. <laughs> He's a child, that's yeah, absolutely awesome. I can't get told off for that. How do you know? Write in to Mock the Week if you happen to know. <laughs> I know. But the question is, how do I, I know? How do I know? Mm. I had a knife fight once. Cut me. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I cut I, I, Papa Smurf's clothes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go <laughs> crawling back to Smurfette, Papa Smurf. I said, uh, don't come around here no more. I know. Yeah. All I know. All I know is that they spunk polka dots. <laughs> It's like the perfect mood for this, the most sensitive question in the current climate. Which blue bloody figure? Which posh figure was in the news recently? Is it the Queen? Queenie. It is the Queen, yeah. The Queenie was fantastic. <laughs> I thought it was absolutely brilliant, I think. So she's having a picture taken, she's got her tiara on, and this matted costume with, you know, a purple trail of ten feet or something. And what I didn't realise about the Queen is that she's fantastically sarcastic. <coughs> so the, the photographer goes, can you take your tiara off to make it less dressy? And the Queen goes, less dressy? What do you think this is? <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. So now, every time she says something, I think, oh, she's being sarcastic. <laughs> so when she's there going, oh, you're going to entertain me with native dance. How thrilling. <laughs> What I loved about the story, though, was that the production company have now taken a, admitted culpability for this. Are the same production company who make faking it. <laughs> <laughs> we should get rid of the Queen. You know, we haven't had a royal assassination for, what, ten years? <laughs> let's, no, let's get rid of her. Let's replace her with Martin McCutcheon. And so, you know, at last I can wank to the £20 note again. <laughs> Wanking on a twenty-pound note. Oh, Two, oh, not oh, on. Uh, <laughs> Gotta get home. <laughs> Where were you? Where do you go to? Do you know how you difficult it is to get people to take Scottish money <laughs> without wanking on it? I love this wanking with it. It's totally different. Yeah. Using yeah. it like some hideous onanistic grunt. Yeah. Yeah. You see, in right trouble about the Queen as it is, and now she finds out that they're promoting wanking <laughs> after she's been assassinated <laughs> on her own lunch. <laughs> Started, yeah. <laughs> That's where we're moving very quickly. <laughs> I think the audience should regard that as a little treasure that won't be shared with the nation. <laughs> with a portrait of the Queen, it always causes controversy, doesn't it? The last one they had was Rolf Harris, and it looked awful, and he himself said, Oh, well, I, I mucked it up a bit, I couldn't do her teeth. And you're thinking, well, why didn't you just paint her with her bloody mouth shut? <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the only I'd like to see do the royal portrait is uh, British porn uh, director bend over. <laughs> <laughs> Could we lose the tiara, ma'am? Uh, Pedro and Dave are about to come. <laughs> the Queen wouldn't be happy with that. Just for you. Blog <laughs> uh, <laughs> this bit, because it ain't fucking being broadcast. Uh, <laughs> the first subject is the worst thing to hear over a tannoy system. Only you can hear me. Would the parents of the child that fell into the tiger enclosure please come to Lost Property to collect her shoes? The train now arriving at platforms four, five and six was blown up on platform seven. <laughs> Would the owner of the burning jeep please remove it, as it's blocking the entrance to the airport? <laughs> this is your captain speaking. Praise be to Allah! <laughs> the parents of a boy who answers to the name of Tommy, he left ten minutes ago with a man in a balaclava. <laughs> Bucket and mop to aisle three, please. Bucket and mop to aisle three. Someone's come on the broccoli. <laughs> No pressure for this one. Um, <laughs> we regret to inform you that the 1022 to Carlisle has been cancelled. In the meantime, here's some of my poetry. <laughs> I'm your pilot, and those were my last words. <laughs> Uh, welcome on board the uh, 1750. It will be calling it signal failure, driver error, 
and the afterlife. <laughs> Can a Mr. Howard come to the front desk, please? A Mr. Howard, we found your butt plug. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we all know there will be a bomb on the tube, but will it be today? <laughs> the owner of the Porsche convertible, you're a middle-aged man having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> uh, the trolley contains a selection of <coughs> fresh sandwiches. <laughs> We're currently cruising at 17 feet, and my wife left me when I converted to Islam. <laughs> Can somebody come to the salami slicer, please? <laughs> the plane's about to land in Glasgow. Passengers are reminded to set their watches back 25 years. <laughs> At the end of that round, ladies and gentlemen, happy at the 30. Frankie, you're alive! Yeah. Lauren, which category would you like? Um, uh, the arts, please, Dara. Okay, the arts it is. The answer is 15 per second. <laughs> but what is the question? Um, is it how many pounds sterling is Simon Cowell paid to cut the cultural throat of our nation and drink <laughs> it still warm blood? That's not what I have on the card. Is it, is it how many people die every week on the TV show CSI Rwanda? <laughs> is it? It'll be, it'll be a machete again. <laughs> Is it at what rate has the BBC issued apologies over the last four months? <laughs> is it how many pumps do women incorrectly believe to constitute the perfect hand job? <laughs> uh, okay, I know it's probably. Does a, is a pump both upward and downward, by the way? <laughs> up and down like you're pumping a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> One pump, I mean, a foot, yeah. <laughs> You, you it, none of it goes in, I get the point. Yeah. When you say none of it goes in, isn't that the whole point of a hand job? <laughs> anyway, is it how many sofas are currently yeah. passing underneath the seven bridge? Yeah. <laughs> it is the world's most tragic floating thing, a sofa, isn't it? It's the most incongruous. <laughs> oh, we can't sit in that now. Uh, <laughs> I saw on bonfire night, I saw a bunch of kids, uh, in, instead of a bonfire in South Shields, set fire to a fridge and dance round it. That was pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite incongruous. Hey, could you, can you burn a fridge? Yeah. Just... Oh, yeah. yeah you can burn it good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it worldwide? How often does someone type into Google, Jez Hungry Titslut? <laughs> There was one really loud applause there, like, <laughs> finally, somebody speaking some sense. In my constituency. So, it's not, is it? If a doctor asks you how much you smoke, what is a bad answer to give? <laughs> <laughs> how does Rick Waller eat his Capri's cream eggs? When beats are the of the ruby-throated Mexican hummingbird, which doesn't sound funny in itself, but the bird in question is taped to my penis. <laughs> Oh, it's how, how many copies of Harry Potter has been sold? It is absolutely correct. Yeah. Well done, Lauren. Very good. Thank you. The question is looking for how quickly were copies of the final Harry Potter book selling on launch day. This is a claim by a leading high street retailer that they were selling 15 copies of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows every second after midnight opens across the country. What do you think of it? Have you read it? Oh, yeah. I actually queued up for the book. You did. No. Yes. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. Listen to that. It was just brilliant. There was loads. Of, what was great, the people dressed as like Hagrid and very, very normal people, young kids and stuff like that. Just thousands of people waiting outside. And then every so often, someone who's drunk would just wander past and go, He dies! <laughs> he dies! <laughs> and then kind of wander off. And then like a minute later, He dies! <laughs> Three people did that when the Bible first came out. There we go. <laughs> What was wonderful, after about, this happened maybe three times, a little kid just plucked out the courage and just one of them went, he dies! And this little kid just went, Expelliarmus! <laughs> and then he sat there going, yes. Yeah. Did you dress up like this? Did I dress up? No, I was just wearing uh, my usual lycra like, cat suit. <laughs> um, <laughs> feel? As, why didn't you turn up dressed as like a stormtrooper? Oh, I'll tell you what, uh, and just queue up as the wrong <laughs> character from the wrong series. What would have been great? <laughs> well, I am Dr. Vader, I'm sorry, I only have the one costume. <laughs> I use it for all these events. <laughs> I was dressed up as like a Sith Lord, just waited in the queue all the while and then just gone, uh, the Da Vinci Code, please. <laughs> Why is it if Harry 
Harry Potter is so magical, why can't he cure his own eyesight and get laid? <laughs> If he, if, he had re if he was a real teenage boy, he wouldn't need a broomstick to cling on to. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe has said, though, that he himself has moved on. He now wants to be taken seriously as an actor, which is why he's been getting his kit off over the last three months in the West End. Obviously, people haven't taken him seriously. People have just gone along to see how big his knob is, haven't they? <laughs> the whole front row will have been full of perverts. Daniel Radcliffe would have been there getting his knob out and realised that six members of the audience have already beaten him to it. <laughs> That's fantastic, I pervert's game of top trumps. <laughs> I see your cock and I raise you mine. <laughs> I have no idea what the end of the book is, but I'm hoping that art imitates life. I am hoping <laughs> that Harry Potter's in there with a graveyard with Voldemort, Voldemort gets out his wand, and Harry <laughs> Potter goes, that's nothing, Voldemort. <laughs> have a look at that. <laughs> I actually saw, this is fantastic, I'm not really pretty sure about that. I was doing a gig in London, and it, when he was doing Equus, um, I was doing a gig very near where he was, in a very small little pub, right? And there was this huge throng of people outside the stage door, and uh, Daniel Radcliffe was obviously signing stuff and stuff like that, and this really amazing, swaggering Londoner just walked past and just shouted out really loudly, Oi! Potter! Stop bothering horses! And just wandered <laughs> off. And, like, and you can just see him going, I'm an actor. Whatever, mate, you're touching horses up, you perv. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Was that, you know, with security for us and stuff, didn't some of the lorries that were delivering the things break down on the M4 and the guys were like, oh no, we're going to have to dig in for the night. Would you not be tempted, and I don't know, I'm not into it, would you not be tempted to get out and get around the back and just be the first one to read it and stuff it all up? <laughs> to be honest, most lorry drivers aren't that interested in fantasy kids books, are they? <laughs> <laughs> they're, well, they're not, no, they're interested in rape and gaffer tape. So, <laughs> I don't know, that's not <laughs> I probably won't make it. Yeah. Apart for that, because I visit a lot of service stations. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't like fantasy books. <laughs> Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is Britishness. Who wants to come in on that? Andy Parsons. <laughs> British people, we are accused of being reserved. We can get excited, can't we? I saw a bloke on a train the other day, finished his Sudoku puzzle, and in front of the entire carriage, he went... <laughs> <laughs> Being able to put the numbers one to nine in the right order. <laughs> Who's the daddy? <laughs> the arsehole... Well, fuck that up, so I'll just... Yeah, I almost said arsehole and had no intention of saying it whatsoever. <laughs> For some reason, the word arsehole came in. Arsehole, <laughs> I've got Tourette's. <laughs> this would be a bad time to find out your Tourette's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking monkey! <laughs> uh, we are... I'm going to get this fucking sentence out. <laughs> we are also noted for our self-deprecation. Of course, only in Britain would we have a best-selling book entitled Crap Towns and have to produce a second book, Crap Towns 2, <laughs> because too many British people had written in complaining that their town hadn't made the first book. <laughs> There's our Andy Parsons. Andy fucking Parsons. <laughs> uh, he's known in the industry. <laughs> What of the form of eco-friendly travel was in the news this week? Was it, was it the Tour de France? It was, of course, the Tour de France. Hugh, tell them what you're doing. What are you doing? I'm not cycling. I'm cycling a stage of the Tour de France. You're not? The day before, you, you know, you're supposed to I'm cycling to an here. amateur stage of the Tour de France. But I'm cycling with the other 169 good cyclists. I'm cycling with 6,000 Frenchmen. When oh. you say amateur stage, have you got stabilisers on either side? <laughs> I wish I had it. And is it, is, it, is it the same as the stage that we cycle for? Stage 15. Oh. And, and how, how long would it take the professionals uh, to cycle? It will take the professionals six hours, and oh. it will take me 12, and it's 196 kilometres. Oh, my God. Your and arse got, is going to be in <laughs> Oh, Jesus. And it's got five hills in it, mountains, the, small, the yeah. smallest of which is slightly higher than Snowden. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward actually. to it. As a, la as a lady, can I just ask, when you're a bloke, right, mm -hmm. and those cyclist saddles that, ha that are like that shape, like a sort of, yeah. some sort of spear. Just go like with a platform it. for my penis. <laughs> Try to regard this show as a platform for your penis. Yeah. <laughs> where, where do you put well, your bollocks? Well, one either side. Uh, I don't even think about that, really. They're sort of, you know, they're encased in lycra further up. Are they? He, he lets them ride side saddle like a lady. <laughs> he, asked, 
Would you see, would you see, you see the mountain or the valley? Yeah, the yeah. valley, all right. <laughs> there we go. Uh, he has a, he has a man who wakes him up halfway through just to pop him to the other side. Right, right. Thank you. You, uh, you can get this condition, apparently, called um, testes torsion. Where it's it's it, they go up like this, and then one of them flips around. You've got magic balls. Are you speaking from experience? I, I have never had it myself, but I've heard a lot of it. It would be Just a really horrible executive desk toy. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like Satan's, oh, Satan's executive that, desk toy. I hate, I hate having meetings with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So you'll be in flying form next oh, week. That's I'll be in. I'll be. I'll be. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, you should have done I'll the first sprightly. stage of the tour, which was in fact from Nine London, minutes. wasn't it? Down to Canterbury, yeah. mm. and our bloke became king of the mountains. Now that's got to be the easiest stage to become king of the mountains. <laughs> it's bloody flat all the way along the Thames. <laughs> what was it doing in London? It's the Tour de France. Yeah. It it's like the is. fucking Eskimo Olympics turning <laughs> off or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, it held me up for a fucking hour. <laughs> and I went, what's, what's, what's going on in the Tour de France? What, here in fucking London? <laughs> Hundreds of guys shooting past me like sponsored sperm. <laughs> Let's start with headliners. Here's a picture of Conservative leader David Cameron. So what does CSIP stand for? Cunt seen in photo? <laughs> <laughs> Any other guesses? Is it his favourite TV show, CSI Portsmouth? <laughs> Every week it's the same story, a gay guy getting kicked to death by sailors. <laughs> Is it Cameron's strangely invisible policies? He, he's, he said it, satirically. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Isn't that very wild? Oh, oh, I did something about the news. Yeah. Uh, is it yeah. conceited, Raw. shallow, inbred prat? <laughs> See, in, a sense, in a sense, he also did something about the news, but he called him a prat at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Cameron shits in Primark? <laughs> Well, if we're doing that, you know, Sherry shits in purse. That's what he's going to <laughs> One person works with that. Is it, is it weird? Sorry, why would a former Prime Minister's wife shit in front of David Cameron? It makes a point. You've got oh, to okay. go. <laughs> I think I saw this one actually. It was cock slip impregnates panda. <laughs> that would explain the concerned look on his face. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think his mood could best be described as pensive. Uh, <laughs> just impregnates the panda, you do feel pensive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't get a panda pregnant, though. They're notoriously difficult to get pregnant. You can impregnate it, you get it in there. Don't lay a pregnant. challenge like that, don't <laughs> me. I'll be in the zoo tomorrow, banging it 24-7. It'd be a great episode of Duncan Dares. <laughs> Challenge Annika. Then you're yeah. particularly good at it. Oh, challenge Annika. Well, well, can you impregnate yeah, exactly, this panda? Yeah. Or a documentary called Bill Oddie Loses It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good What's Oddie doing? A documentary oh. should have made a few years ago. Later, when the rest of the team had all got to bed, Good Bill was found <laughs> climbing the fence into the zoo. <laughs> no, Bill, no, come back. <laughs> He's dressed as bamboo. Oh. <laughs> Could you fix it for me to fuck a panda? <laughs> <laughs> I think they just want the right answer now, okay. and it's Catholic schools invented paedophilia. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Yeah. Thank you. Good to know that somebody is actually playing the game correctly. <laughs> yeah. so Elsewhere, what good news has been announced for pregnant women? Well, they're going to get £120 uh, to buy fruit and vegetables when they're pregnant, although obviously they'll all spend it on a prostitute for their husbands so they don't have to take up the arse when they're <laughs> Not that I'm having a fucking drink, do you mind? Yeah. Yeah. That's what she said. Yeah. Because <laughs> people want to act pregnant now, so there's going to be a... What, do you think GPs won't notice there's a fucking cushion? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. People will start hiring dwarves with potholing experience. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I just do this one? Oh, yeah. Because you're sad, you've got to be to hire a dwarf. <laughs> Gina, we wish to leave the room because yeah. I say. Also, that's the Lord of the Rings DVD extra. How, <laughs> how is the Church of England? How is the Church of England trying to cheer us all up? Free hand jobs from the <laughs> You don't expect me to be getting sensible answers in this thing. So you really think you're going to get just, that. Just a big hand outside a church. Come on. Yeah. Are they doing a porn with songs of praise? <laughs> I'm here in St Albans with some anal lube. Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> ben, 
then which category would you like? Let's go politics. Okay, your category is politics. The answer is 10%. What is the question? Is it the amount of urine that inexplicably breaks off from the main jet? <laughs> go into the furry thing around the toilet that women think we're keeping their feet warm. <laughs> is it how much blood has Amy Winehouse got in her blood? <laughs> <laughs> How many scarecrows in England are real people? <laughs> Is it... How much of a twiglet will Posh Spice eat if she wants a really filling meal? <laughs> Is it penises in Scotland are how much bigger than the rest of the UK? <laughs> <laughs> How much of my annual income is effectively stolen from me by a money-grabbing harridan who calls herself my agent? <laughs> it's, it's one way to is fire it? an agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it how much of Heather Mills McCartney is made of wood? <laughs> possibly, possibly plastic, given the advances since the Napoleonic Wars. <laughs> Probably made of gold now. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. Following new information published in The Lancet recently, what is the revised percentage of my penis it is now medically safe for a woman to accommodate? <laughs> is that it... is referring to a joke from up to two series ago. Uh, yeah. What percentage of my penis can I get inside an otter? <laughs> Before the otter notices. <laughs> The key. Yeah. Very sharp teeth. And to be honest, it was an excellent episode of You Being Frank. <laughs> Is that Frankie Boyle? <laughs> what percentage of the British public would like to see a mountain fall on top of Griffiths Jones? <laughs> Is it what, what percentage of Belgians are paedophiles? <laughs> Dundee, what is the success rate of the chat up line, do you want pumped? <laughs> <laughs> How much is Gordon Brown leading the polls at the moment? Absolutely, very good. No, no, that's not fair, because he, he got the question around earlier as well. The question, he got the question But I got that one genuinely right. No. <laughs> no, with some help from the... From no, I've got no right, fucking help whatsoever. Dora, it's the... You're uh, my fucking team! <laughs> <laughs> You're dead to motherfucker! <laughs> Yes, the question I was looking for is how big is Labour's lead over the Conservatives this week? This is the latest opinion poll that puts the government at 42%, a 10-point lead over the Conservatives, their biggest lead since before the Iraq war in 2003. The size of the margin is leading to speculation that Gordon Brown will call an autumn election. I would like to see who answers opinion polls, those people who wander up and down the street. I think you do a poll of who answers opinion polls, right? 45% of people will be clinically lonely. 33% of people will be waiting for a friend and think it might pass the time. 11% are going to be old or on crutches and unable to involve the old, you know, involve going for the old pollster. Something like that. I might say that one again. 11%. If your numbers add up, by the way, this stage. 11%. I can go for 10 if you prefer it. I'll go for 9. Fuck it. 9% are, are on. No, I can't get out of that. And 7%. 7% are mentally ill and just want to lick the clipboard. <laughs> that was what Did you know what, Andy? That would get you 95% in A-level maths. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just join the police. Uh, <laughs> on, the, on the subject on the, on, 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 of, of, of an early election, because yeah. apparently Labour's polling guru, which is a great title for yourself when you're chatting someone up, uh, polling guru. Uh, do you want pumping? Do you, do you want, <laughs> guru, yeah. Yeah. Do, but, you, uh, do you want ten percent of my cock? <laughs> <laughs> it's medically safe. <laughs> oh, that'd be a hideous thing to say. <laughs> it's <Lord> medically <laughs> safe. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. The one thing I was told beforehand was, don't make it too rude and try and keep to the point. I'm trying to talk about polling guru Lord Gould, and we're talking about my cock. <laughs> because you mentioned oh, it earlier. It's a callback. It's a callback. We didn't go, hey, Ed, is that your dick there? <laughs> You've got it out. Your cock just came up, OK? <laughs> <laughs> that an entire section of a BBC show will be turned over to discussing your cock. Uh, yeah. It's happened. Yeah. Did you not see Newsnight that time? <laughs> <laughs> really weird dragons then when you did that, though. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> First you sitting there going, and according to Lane's findings. Anyway, uh, sorry, yeah. you were saying, Ed, you were saying yes, it at the I polling was, well, It doesn't really matter. It's going to be once again very anticlimactic. But at the point... It, it, we're back to your cock here, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. My favourite bit of commentary was when they interviewed, uh, interviewed Brian Robson once at the end of a game. 
And Brian Robson went, just looked straight at the camera and he went, if we played like that every week, we wouldn't be so inconsistent. <laughs> Just, you know, for no reason, I always wanted to piss at Brian Robson in Dublin, and he's a miserable cunt. <laughs> <laughs> That's going in. That's going Boy, in. the DVD extras. I hear you're a comedian. I haven't said anything funny yet, have you? Fuck you, you prick. Uh, <laughs> like, I just, the great thing about Robson. Like, I had a f my friend Alf, picture, like, fantastic story. He's on a plane with Robbo, and he just leans over and said to about five people, he went, uh, just uh, been offered the uh, island manager job, keep it under your app, but uh, I've been offered... Like that, so they went out, put loads of money on it, and he was clearly just taking the piss out of them. <laughs> That's quite funny. Funnier than anything he said the night he was out with me. Uh, <laughs> I had a uh, Scottish footballer of the year <laughs> this year. Yeah. I came to do some comedy at that. That's a tough Not game. the brightest people in the world. <laughs> there were seven O levels in that room, <laughs> and they were all mine, Darren. <laughs> Actually, I, did, I met Alex Hamlet once, not on the same night I met Brian Robson. Uh, and, uh, but I met Alex Hamlet at a wedding once, and I was told, oh, Alex Hamlet's coming on. I said, oh, I've always wanted to meet him. He's an interesting character. And I said, we'd introduce you. So I'm standing at the wedding, and behind me here, shuffle, 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 and Alex Hamlet is there. And he taps me on the shoulder, and I turn, and he goes... Do you want to dance? No. <laughs> during the wedding, right? But he said uh, you want pumped. No, he didn't. <laughs> None of these solutions. This isn't a game. This is actually a story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and he turns and goes, hello, I'm Alex Hammond. And I said, hello, I'm Dara Reed, expecting a <coughs> chat. And he goes, do you mind moving to the left? My wife can't see the couple. <laughs> <laughs> Mike was blocking the entire view of the church for his wife. And he just and I had to move along to the end of the row. So it was what like a big fucking wedding. Right? No. When asking someone to move out of their wife's view, introduces themselves with their full name. I'm, oh, no. I'm Alex Hammond. Would you mind moving out of my wife? <laughs> so you go, all right, Chief, would you mind? You should have crushed his head like a walnut, Dara. <laughs> She's my wife now! <laughs> that would be an amazing... Hello, I'm Dara O'Brien. Yeah. Fuck you and your midget wife. <laughs> yeah. The next topic is... Bad ways for Gordon Brown to address the nation. You can take our lives, but you'll never take our freedom! <laughs> I believe in openness and transparency, which is why my trousers are open and my pants are transparent. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to see me take my eye out? <laughs> I've told George Bush exactly what I think of him. Quick, everyone, to the shelters! <laughs> Ooh, I'm the people of Gloucester and I've got a wet house. <laughs> People of Britain, when I address you like this, did you know sometimes I get so excited <laughs> a little bit of wee comes out? <laughs> In these troubled times between our nations, I feel I need to reach out to President Putin and say, I have shagged your mother. <laughs> I'm G to the B and this is how I roll. <laughs> you got beef with me, you kiss my A double S ho. I'm disgusted that so many cabinet ministers have smoked cannabis because there's some fantastic MDMA going around. <laughs> <laughs> this won't get in. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens if you disagree with me. <laughs> this isn't my sporting. It's Hazel Blears asking for a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> my cabinet of all the talents, I'm pleased to introduce Michael Barrymore <laughs> as Minister of Swimming. Lick my neck, lick my back, lick my pussy and my crack. Of course I don't let my wife do interviews. If you were driving a Ford Focus, you wouldn't let... Oh, fucking never mind. <laughs> Of course I don't let my wife do interviews. If you drive a... I can't remember the name of the car. <laughs> Go on, Lord, have one. Don't fucking do it. <laughs> Say about my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you in? 
I was hoping you I still can't remember the name of the car. All right. Ford Focus. Like, yeah. No, Ford Focus is too good. Yes, and Cherry? Yes, yes and Cherry. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm in this Nissan Cherry. <laughs> you thought Tony Blair was a cunt. Watch this. David, which category would you like? Uh, science. Okay, your category is science. The answer is serious, risky, and heroic. So what is the question? What is telling farmers, you know, it could be worse? <laughs> How have people described my recent sex tour of Nigeria? <laughs> Very well reviewed in The Spectator. <laughs> is it what a snap, crackle, and pops DJ names? <laughs> Is it what are the three speed settings on the world's most powerful vibrator? <laughs> what are the nicknames for my cock and two balls? <laughs> which is which? <laughs> Serious is my cock, risky and heroic and the nuts. <laughs> so I'll to the show. It's good job. <laughs> I'm just trying to work out why. Why that order? Well, I mean, I mean oh. surely, I mean, in general, the balls hang back. Heroic should be the cock. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I just try and keep the word risky out of there all day. <laughs> uh, it's actually called Steve. I'll just stay for a laugh. <laughs> uh, do they know the actual answer? The name of the only transvestite bar in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> what is sticking your knob through next door neighbour's letterbox? <laughs> what way is it heroic, exactly? <laughs> One way to meet your neighbours, isn't it? <laughs> Did anyone here have a fag at school? Yeah. Did you? Yes. Did you read really? what was his name? Squitters. Yes, this one. <laughs> Bunty, <laughs> Miffy, it's all right. Anthony. Anthony, of course. He made the toast really well. He made the toast. Wow. How old were you when you had him? <laughs> well, you know, when he was under your side. First thing, I was uh, 17 and he was, I'm not going to say. Well, you have to now. Feel the excitement. What have I missed? It, um, this fellow here had a fag called Anthony, he used to make him toast. Did you beat him? <laughs> Did he beat you? Uh, depend on what day of the week it was, really. Uh, but no, generally not. He just made you toast. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> you hear about people who abuse their power. Make me toast. Toast, yeah. Don't so like burn it! Just a lack of imagination. You won't like it, me yeah. when it's burnt. And if no, it's tasty, you can suck my cock. <laughs> It's a bad time to commence. Yeah. <laughs> We're having a bit of toast banter. Toast? toast no yeah. one can suck my cock after toast. <laughs> I hope we're rolling on that. Yes. Are you still oh. feeling bad time to come in? <laughs> Are you thinking that the Marmite would burn? <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's all like it is, ladies and gentlemen, you have to move on. And yet, no, no, Angie, I can see you in my peripheral vision, just <laughs> eagerly trying to get in and earn yourself some banana. But you can fuck off, you're not getting any banana. <laughs> the next round is called Headlines. It's fairly obvious what the big news story of the week was. Here's a picture of the effects of this summer's adverse weather. What does RFHB stand for? Is it Reading Faces Hosepipe Band? <laughs> <laughs> is it Rivers Flooded Help? Is it revenge for homosexuality and binging? <laughs> is it rabbits found holding breath? <laughs> is it rumour flooding has begun? I, I think it's past the rumour. <laughs> uh, uh, I like the gentle soft <laughs> cell approach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rampant flooding hinders bungee jump. <laughs> is it, oh, it hinder a bungee jump? Because you drown, Dara. <laughs> back out, it depends how long the cable is, sure. that, that bit, and then you think you're about to get out, but you know, you're still in. Oh. No, no, it's it's not triumphant with the fish. <laughs> in your mouth, if you come up with a fish in your mouth. <laughs> is, it, is it royal family hate blacks? I saw this one, actually. Uh, it, was, uh, it was rimming, fisting, happy benders. <laughs> Do you remember, yeah. do you remember, I, do you remember I said there's a bit that won't go out? Uh, you, just, you just enjoy them as a beautiful moment. Uh, what, 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 
Cheers, Ron. Oh, okay. Well, all better off. Yeah. All better off. This is actually the final line from the Harry Potter book. It's Ron, Fist, Hermione. Bye. <laughs> It's not Same. residents fleeing helps burglars. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not quite as exciting as fisting Hermione. No, it doesn't. Exactly. Or the royal no, family randomly having something against black people. <laughs> it's more topical, though. It, it is yeah, topical. At least he's sooner back so on the news. Right. Right. Yeah. Don't you think the Church of England know where to build their churches, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> is it I really fucked off, haven't got banana? <laughs> Joe, which category would you like? Sport. Your category is sport. The answer is 250,000. Is that the amount of Iceland dinners the robbers took from Kerry Katona's house? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a point where they came in. Do you have anything other than drumsticks? <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that isn't breaded? <laughs> is it, what world ranking is the British tennis number five? <laughs> Is that how many votes does it take to give Stephen Hawking an erection? <laughs> oh, right. Is it 251,000? <laughs> uh, how much of a dickhead is Victoria Beckham out of ten? <laughs> is, it, of all the, is it of all the fan mail she receives every day, how many letters does the actress Kirsten Dunst simply put into a file marked sexually menacing? <laughs> Boy. Yeah. <laughs> is it, is it how much does Bill Gates earn whilst defecating? <laughs> does he not earn money while he's not defecating? He does yeah. not well, he's, but a I'm saying, he's a professional but, sitter. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it how many people starred in the Chinese version of the Magnificent Seven? <laughs> is it if you phone up British Telecom, which position in the queue are you likely to be? <laughs> Is it, is it the invention of an invisibility cloak would lead to what rise in annual sex offences? <laughs> <laughs> but it's sport, isn't it? Is it to do with Beckham? It yes. is to do with Beckham. Is it? How many uh, shirts do the Americans claim that Beckham has sold? That's absolutely right. Well done, Russell. Congratulations. <laughs> the question I was looking for is how many Beckham replica shirts are LA Galaxy already claiming to have sold? He's wearing that the wrong way round. He is. That's, that's a <laughs> <laughs> but it looks just off shot. A clown is just ejaculating. <laughs> Do you, does anyone think... Does anyone think that Beckham actually knows he's in America? <laughs> I think he just, he just runs after a ball and all he notices is that occasionally it gets warmer. <laughs> Did you see how they launched themselves in America with that photo shoot? Did anyone see those pictures yeah, yeah, of them? Yeah, yeah. With her, I mean, but, I mean, for their children, it's sad, isn't it? Because here's mummy looking like a whore and daddy like a rent boy. Yeah. <laughs> and she looks like she has a dumb for about once every four years. <laughs> it's probably how Beckham can tell that there's a World Cup coming up. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's documentaries being made about them and they're just so dull as a footballer. Because like, the Americans go, oh, is he going to score a hat trick? Is he going to dribble? Not really. He's really good at playing a diagonal ball, and if the front man's got a pace, there's every chance that you'll score. You know, he's, <laughs> he's not like they should do a documentary about such a shame Garincha isn't still alive. He's a footballer. Right? He was born uh, in like 1950 odd with one leg shorter than the other. Um, he fathered 40 kids. He was married eight times. He used to smoke 80 a day. He lost his virginity when he was 15 to a goat. Now that <laughs> that's a documentary. <laughs> he just going, where's where's my keys? Yeah. <laughs> American footballers all rape underage girls. He's done none of that, has he? Nope. There is a question mark. All of them. All yes. famous yes. American sporting figures That's rape the underage girls. They do. They're into it. Yes. This the girl got raped shitless. Yeah. I mean, just upstairs in the room, there's a man turning to a lawyer going, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> and the lawyer's going, <laughs> She'd said most. If she'd said most. If she'd given us some wiggle room on yeah. this, uh, then perhaps we could have. Keep it up. Got You're talking the Queen come short stuff into the show. <laughs> Beckham, Beckham said he's going to do his talking on the pitch in America. It's just as well because off the pitch he sounds like a brain damaged animatronic kitten. <laughs> What's really funny is the, re the, the American reaction to them, the golden couple of hair and you know they're the saviour of soccer. When they first got together in this country, the reaction was in, in our country was just to sing at him repeatedly whilst he was playing, does she take it up the arse? <laughs> such a different reaction. Like, oh, they're here. Oh, yeah, <laughs> she take it up the arse. Last one, Steve. I'm so proud of you, son. <laughs> the other bizarre thing, they want to read about that. Apparently, they've got an £800,000 diamond encrusted uh, vibrator that David bought for. What's the point of having a, a diamond encrusted vibrator? Oh, it no. would just be the same, but a bit more painful. But exactly. <laughs> you don't want to hear the word encrusted.
crested and vibrated. <laughs> Either way. You just, you'd have to like keep it on a special kind of like pillow, yeah. wouldn't you? You, you, must have have you must have diamonds in his actual cock for that. <laughs> Queen stuff's looking better and better. <laughs> okay, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear at a party conference. Okay, I've got the Gip Master and Rent Boys all back to mine. <laughs> we will win the next election with my new slogan: "A vote for me is a vote for HIV." <laughs> My name is Ming Campbell. I am not dead, nor am I operated by a pulley system. <laughs> <laughs> and folk, I'm like, I'm Liberal Democratic Party. <laughs> Quick, come and look. Charles Kennedy's got his head stuck in the minibar. <laughs> I think I can speak for everybody here because I'm a mixed race hermaphrodite. <laughs> Has anyone seen Ming's teeth? <laughs> Last year, we urged you to hug a hoodie. This year, go a stage further. Win a robber. <laughs> Brothers, sisters, I don't care. I'll fuck anything. <laughs> um, I'm uh, Gordon Brown, and uh, welcome to Brighton. Very nice here, but a bit too gay. <laughs> Three priorities, education, education, and free hand jobs for the blind. <laughs> I have principles, and if you don't like them, I have others. <laughs> I must tell you, brothers and sisters, that in my constituency, real people are asking real questions, like, do you think it was mermaids who invented the titwank? <laughs> And the crowd are giving him a standing ovation. A standing ovation because finally he has stopped fucking talking. <laughs> now we play a game called What on Earth? Uh, you're thinking at home, wow, I haven't seen this game before. That's because we never fucking broadcast it. <laughs> <laughs> I show the panel a topical image from somewhere in the world and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, what on earth is this? It's Margaret Thatcher meeting Gordon Brown in number 10 Downing Street. He invited her for tea and it's pissed off everyone uh, on, in the Labour Party and in the Tory Party. And worse than that, he's having uh, a portrait of her commissioned, naked, holding back a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering what the photo actually shows. Is he just trodden on her toe and got to say that? <laughs> Seems a bit harsh to an 81 year old lady. She's just scratching <laughs> her hand like that, isn't she? Half right, just. Look at how baffled she is. Yeah. She thinks she still lives there mm. and that she's a cat. <laughs> is, is this the QE2? I'm Shirley Bassett. Get out of my way. Well, I feel sorry for Cameron because he's a bit like uh, Brown's flirting with his ex. Do you know what I mean? He's like some bloke in a pub. Leave it, Dave. She's not worth it. You left her. You left her. <laughs> she's getting surprisingly perky tits for an 81 year old. <laughs> yes, it is. Look at those puppies. <laughs> It is a surprise. Fucking let's vote her back in, the dirty bitch. <laughs> Jan, which category would you like? Oh, I think environment. Okay. Category is environment. The answer is over 31,000 tonnes. What is the question? Is it the weight of the first ever mobile phone? Oh. <laughs> is it? I'm building a conceptual sculpture called <laughs> Scottish Football. I'll be needing a pair of football boots and how much horse shit? <laughs> if you sell fertiliser, what size order should make you suspicious? <laughs> if that bomb had gone off, how much cellulite would be spattered across central Scotland? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you had the place pebble dash? No, terrorist attack. <laughs> how much weight has Charlotte Church put on in pregnancy? <laughs> Dare you? I'm <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when Tony Blair was asked how many Iraqis he killed, what was his callous reply? <laughs> Is it how many tears did Paris Hilton cry in prison? Is oh, it? We love her as well, do we? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you really misjudged this crowd tonight, haven't you? Yeah. We're the the people one sacred that... cow after another here, yeah. 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 a story that they put, apparently, it could just be a story, but the guards put sperm in 
Paris Hilton's porridge. <laughs> that's got to be that's got to be horrible for oh, there's porridge in this. <laughs> What her, is... her eating spunk is fine. <laughs> but frying car, too far. <laughs> we don't mind her noshing down man fat, but apparently the trickle of tears for shame. <laughs> the next topic is unlikely lines to hear in a TV show. Next round of Mock the Week. How many monkey buckets? I've got to get the tournament. Right. Let me watch this. <laughs> wait. 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 <laughs> And the next round of Mock the Week, how many cigarettes can the monkey smoke? <laughs> <laughs> so get dialing, because remember, those phone lines close at midnight. Yesterday. <laughs> and now the Antiques Roadshow. This programme contains scenes of tedious dullness right from the start. <laughs> If you have an opinion on this news story, why not keep it to yourself? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Mock the Week After Dark. I'm Dar O'Brien and this is my penis. <laughs> the, this is what happens when you get questions wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the next program contains nudity. It happens about ten minutes in and she's got terrific knockers. <laughs> and now over to Kate Humble, who's going to kick the face off a badger. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Baby Boring with me, Gary Glitter. <laughs> uh, Teletubbies say, Spunky Bum Love. <laughs> We interrupt this programme to bring you a news flash. <laughs> <laughs> On this week's Place in the Sun, Darfur. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Channel 4's Wank Week, with me, Leslie Grantham. <laughs> Chris Langham, this is your life. <laughs> This week on Location, 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 Mohammed is looking for a pied a terre within easy reach of an international airport. <laughs> With no incorrect answers and no passes, Jade Goody, you've scored 37 on the life of Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> on Sean the Sheep this week, Sean has a big surprise when a nasty defra man comes round with a bolt gun. <laughs> Next on Loose Women, someone worth wanking to. No deal, Edmunds! You're going to give me the money, or I'm going to start shooting! Well done, you're on the point of here. Russell Davis!